This video is sponsored by Out of the Box Encounters, a Kickstarter made by a bunch of nerds. These two lovely goblin men and their team made over 30 encounters you can easily throw into your campaign because you forgot to write the next session. You know it's a good idea if they've already reached all their stretch goals, which just means even more cool shit for you. I'd personally grab the book as an inspirational template to see what professionally fleshed out encounters look like. They got monsters, they got maps, they got hazards, they got puzzles, and they even got traps. Speaking of which, traps in D&D are pretty much anything that doesn't roll initiative, but can kill you. Some of the most classic examples include arrow slits, falling rocks, bear traps, and the final boss. A large pit with, with like a spike in it, and maybe a rat. Let's just get straight into the meat of the topic, because I got nothing else to dance around on. The four cornerstones of any trap you'll ever make or use are the visibility, the failsafe, the trigger, and the result. If you have a description for each one, you have a trap ready to employ. Alright, cool, another video down. Hope you guys learned something. Misdirection! The hidden power of any trapper is to confuse and surprise the victim, guiding them into the grave with a false guise of safety or bounty. Let's use the monkey fist trap as our first example. The basic concept is to provide something the victim needs or desires, such as treasure, power, safe travel, or in this instance, food. A monkey will see a small hole filled with nuts. Then he'll grab these nuts and won't let go of these nuts. Fucking got him. <laughs> Idiot. The trigger is shoving their fist in the hole. The fail safe is just to let go of the damn nuts. And the result is a free monkey you can just pick up and take home to hang out with. The important note here is that the trap has a specific target. Sometimes, if a trap won't put the creator at risk, it won't have a failsafe and can't be disabled aside from triggering it. Unless that shit's magical, then just dispel it, you fool. The first thing you'll need for a trap, before you consider any mechanics or damage, is the general concept. This is just the result that you visualize. Here's a few off the top of my head. Human-sized mouse traps, uh, Bigby's hand bitch slaps, maybe an alligator pit, or spinning totem poles with knives and shit. Maybe walk-in cages or like powder that ages. Multi-level marketing, you, you do flammable carpeting, or animated armor sets. In water, you can put like blazing hot water jets, or just a classic pitfall, or maybe some just like a spiky wall. Let's run through a couple things to get a feel for the process. The first trap will be a rig chest. In addition to the four cornerstones, consider why the trap was made. For my chest, the trapper will see it as a valuable storage space in their lair, so it'll be stocked with a bit of coins or other items that the trapper values. Then, knowing the value of the items, they'll put a fake tray on top of the valuables filled with toxic mushrooms. Step one is designing the trigger. For this trap, it's as simple as opening the chest, which reveals the mushrooms. For description's sake, I'll add wooden needles attached to the roof of the chest that cut through the shrooms and spray the spores out. Step two is the failsafe, basically what the trapper uses to avoid the trap itself. I'll put a sort of button on the back of the chest that when pushed slides two pegs into the mushroom tray, attaching it to the roof of the chest. For visibility, there's no real way to eye the chest and catch note of the trap because everything but the button is inside. A solid DC 14 investigation check will reveal the button, but not its purpose. Never reveal your secrets. Keep them guessing. Keep them afraid. Also note that I said investigation, not perception. That shit's pressed up against a wall. Don't fight me on that. I'll cut you. Lastly is the result. This is the mechanical angle of the trap that deals the damage and shit. As an airborne intestinal toxin, you breathe it in and it makes your tum tum hurt a lot. The spores spread out to a 10 foot radius, and failing a DC constitution save means they twist your guts. 10 minutes after the failed roll, targets will take 2d6 poison damage and are poisoned for the next hour. Violent diarrhea follows suit for roughly a week. The Dungeon Master's Guide has a great set of tables for shifting damage types and save DCs for traps, so you can tailor them to your party's level. 
With a mechanized trap out of the way, let's make a two-layered magic trap. Not everything you make needs to be based on existing mechanics, and I'm an advocate for bringing back the permanency spell. I'm also going to be an asshole with this one and go heavy on misdirection. Enter my chamber. Here we have a network of flagstones, blatantly uneven. A DC 10 perception check, or a passive alerts you to the pressure plates. My trapper wants you to notice. Also here is a dormant clay golem, a few spouts in the walls, a shut stone door, and an inscription above the door. You'd think, entering here, you should avoid the pressure plates and read the inscription to open the door. An arcana check or otherwise even proves the inscription is magical. We'll make it in Elvish, a semi-common language, and have it be four words. Let me inside, bitch. For visibility, the cards are all on the table. The ambiguity of magic greatly aids the trap, even if you know what school it is. The trigger, as you figured out because I said it was a mean trap, is to read the inscription. It's actually a command word to activate the golem as well as the spouts. The failsafe, which you also guessed, is to step on every pressure plate. You can also add a required order to it, with small inscriptions on the stone or something earlier in the dungeon. The result of activating the trigger is an awakened clay golem, and the spouts begin to fill the room with acid in a similar way to create or destroy water. The acid fully fills this chamber in 10 minutes, and then promptly drains. They also reinvigorate the golem because of acid absorption and because fuck you. So that's how I make traps, but if you're looking for a more concrete description, let's run through a trap from the book. This fire-breathing statue's pretty dope, I think they have these in some fun houses. The trap is activated when an intruder steps on a hidden pressure plate, releasing a magical gout of flame from a nearby statue. Right out the gate, they describe the trigger, which is probably the first thing a DM should know when running a trap. The statue can be of anything, including a dragon or a wizard casting a spell. I really like flavoring, but I'd make mine like a giant wiener or a middle finger. Shoot, now I want to make a comedy dungeon. The DC is 15 to spot the pressure plate, as well as faint scorch marks on the floors and walls. A spell or other effect that can sense the presence of magic, such as detect magic, reveals an aura of evocation magic around the statue. The second thing they describe here is visibility. This is probably because over 50% of you capped dunsmen are more likely to trigger a trap than look for it, so information follows suit. They also offer a variety of ways for adventurers to catch on to the trap, which is very kind of them. The trap is activated when more than 20 pounds of weight is placed on the pressure plate, causing the statue to release a 30-foot cone of fire. Here, they restate the trigger, with more mechanical details. That's for DMs who have players that argue with them, or people who just want better descriptions. Each creature in the fire must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, taking 22 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. Finally, we have the outcome, which is a buttload of fire damage. Wedging an iron spike or other objects under the plate prevents the trap from activating. A successful dispel magic cast on the statue will also destroy the trap. And at the very end, they describe the failsafe. Because it's a bit more cryptic than pressing the off button, we can assume the trapper either doesn't venture here often or can float. Alright man, that's literally all I got. Go throw some of your trap ideas in the comments so I can steal them, and then sl slam that like and subscribe button, because apparently those two things help me earn money. And, uh, uh, go verbally assault your cat if you forgot to today. My blue poop stain of a cat knocked over a TV today. That's my closing statement. Bye.